record high temperatures, very high heat indexes, severe weather, and the tropics is what we're going to be talking about in today's weather forecast. Welcome back, everyone, to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage on this Tuesday, August 27, 2024, and we have a lot to talk about, so make sure to subscribe to the channel down below if you haven't already for the latest weather information right at your fingertips. We are quickly getting close to 95,000 and ultimately 100,000 subscribers, so help out and subscribing down below if you haven't already make sure to press the like button the thumbs up button down below it helps to get this video out to more and more people leave any comments questions and concerns below we'll get to those after the video so let's dive right into the forecast today on your Tuesday and here are the heat headlines up across the Ohio Valley parts of the Midwest and Great Lakes and that stretches over toward the mid-Atlantic as well in the orange those are heat advisories in the magenta shade of color those are excessive heat warnings into the metropolitan areas of Madison Madison, Wisconsin, Milwaukee into Chicago, into areas of Peoria, Illinois, and then back into the Davenport Quad Cities region as we do go through the Tuesday time frame. Here is the culprit. We have a big ridge of high pressure across the eastern U.S. sitting right over the Corn Belt, and that continues to provide very hot temperatures, record high temperatures, and even some very high heat index values. So let's look at that this afternoon. Here are your high temperatures, and yes, folks, this is on the lakefront of Chicago on the Lake Michigan shoreline, 97 degrees for a high temperature expected there this afternoon. That could break a record or close to a record that was set back in the 1950s. 90 here into the lakefront of Milwaukee, 91 in Green Bay, 98 in St. Louis, and 98 back there in the Kansas City region this afternoon for expected highs. Now, what makes it very uncomfortable and dangerous out there with the heat is those dew point temperatures. The higher they are, the more moisture there are there is in the environment. And as you walk outside, this is what you call air you can wear. You can see dew points in the middle, upper 70s, even locally 80 degree dew points in this region here as the corn crop, the evapotranspiration back into the atmosphere with all the moisture out there. And you can see that provides our heat indexes back into the 105, 110, 150. 15 degree Fahrenheit range across Chicago, Rockford, Illinois, back down into Galesburg, into Western Illinois, into the St. Louis area, all the way back here into portions of Jefferson City, Missouri, and Kansas City this afternoon. So make sure to stay hydrated out there. Make sure to take frequent breaks in an air conditioned building here, especially if you do venture outdoors or work outdoors this afternoon. And here are the tips that you can follow heat exhaustion. This is the symptoms here. Dizzy Dizziness, thirsty, heavy sweating, nausea, and weakness, that couldn't lead to heat stroke. So if you have any of these symptoms, confusion, dizziness, or become unconscious, call 911 immediately. Stay cool, stay hydrated, and stay informed on the heat during this heat wave. Now, all this heat and humidity has led to a lot of storm energy out there. We did see a lot of severe weather yesterday across the upper Midwest, back into the plains. We In the blue, those are the wind reports. In the greens, those are hail reports. Thankfully, no tornadoes reported, but we did have 133 severe weather reports yesterday, and some of those actually with a lot of hail reports in and around the Boston area, Hartford, up there into the northeast and the northeast coastline from Monday. Here is the storm energy today. They're convecting available potential energy into the whites. That's around 5,000 joules per kilogram. It doesn't get much higher than that this time of year. And so the Storm Prediction Center's day one outlook here for today does have that level two out of five slight risk of severe weather stretching from portions of Lake Erie back there through portions of Lake Michigan. So Michigan, northern Ohio, parts of northern Indiana, Wisconsin, Illinois, especially northern and central Illinois, into eastern and southeastern Iowa and extreme northeastern portions of Missouri, we have that slight risk. And then that marginal level one out of five extending back into Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri, and southwest. Western Iowa. And the biggest threats today will be driven by 60 mile per hour wind gusts or greater, quarter size hail or greater, and the potential for some tornadoes. The tornado threat is low, but there still is a non zero chance of a tornado. This is a 2% within a 25 mile radius of Michigan 
into eastern Wisconsin and northeast Illinois. So we'll be watching that from Green Bay down to Milwaukee there, the Rockford area over there toward Waukegan, and then getting into Grand Rapids, Kalamazoo, all the way over here toward Detroit and Lansing as we do go through the afternoon and the evening. So let's walk you through the setup here this afternoon. Very quiet will be our skies this afternoon. I think a lot of sunshine, filtered sunshine with some clouds out there will be likely. A storm or two may be possible with better forcing up there in northern Michigan, but I think the atmosphere will remain capped, kind of like a pot of boiling water. If you have the lid on the pot of boiling water, that steam can't come out. That's what the atmosphere is acting like this afternoon. But as we remove that pot of boiling water and we also remove the lid, that steam starts to come out, right? And we start to see thunderstorm development likely late this evening and then into the overnight hours, early Wednesday morning. This will be after midnight and some of these storms even after midnight could be severe across parts of the Midwest into the Great Lakes. We'll be watching that as well. So and then as we go into Wednesday, that severe weather threat shifts a little bit further to the east, into the Ohio Valley, into the mid-Atlantic here, into places like Ohio, Pennsylvania, including the Poconos region there, into northern West Virginia, Maryland, New Jersey, and Delaware. We'll be keeping an eye on severe weather there. And then another system coming in across the northern plains, we'll have to watch a level 2 out of 5 in the yellow slight risk and a marginal risk surrounding that level 1 out of 5 in the Dakotas and northwest Minnesota on Wednesday. That'll dive a little bit bit further south and east on Thursday to a marginal risk. And we have a marginal risk over here into the southeast coast, like the Carolina, southern Virginia on Thursday. Here are the rainfall amounts going through the end of August through Saturday, August 31st. You can see the heaviest rains in the upper Mississippi Valley region. So all this water is going to be traveling down the Mississippi River. So some elevated river levels will be possible later on in the week across portions there of St. Louis, for example, maybe the Memphis area, and then down there toward portions of Mississippi as we get closer toward the Labor Day weekend. A lot of heavy rain though from Houston over towards portions of New Orleans. A couple inches there will be possible and very dry, bone dry out west through the rest of the month. Let's talk about this new system because it's going to drive a very strong cold front across the contiguous United States here on Wednesday. This is tomorrow. You can see that system occluding and starting to develop across portions of the Rockies. And then this will swing a very strong cold front with an occluding low pressure system up there in Manitoba, Ontario, Canada, and the southern central Canadian prairies on Friday. And this will scour out a lot of the humidity, a lot of the heat that we have here. So it's going to be a short lift. So today is the worst of it. Then as we go into Wednesday, tomorrow afternoon, we still see the heat out here. It's going to be hot. Make no mistake about it. Back into the 80s, back into the 90s, and triple Digit heat index values. Thursday gets a little bit cooler. Yes, we still have 80s and 90s, but here comes that cold front. And then Friday, for any Friday night football games that you guys have to attend out there, the upper Midwest or the northern U.S. in general looks absolutely gorgeous with temperatures in the 70s, low humidity. Yes, still very hot, 80s and 90s, but that cold front is on the way. And here is a reinforcing shot of cold air. We have a second cold front dropping out of Canada with a true Canadian high pressure system right over the international border there between Saskatchewan and the Dakotas. And you can see that on Sunday dropping south and east, and that will lead to some wonderful temperatures for Labor Day weekend. So let's look here on Saturday, August 31st. Yes, we're still seeing near normal or leaning above normal temperatures across the east. Watch as we go into Sunday. There goes that below normal temperature anomalies that could be 20 degrees below normal, by the way, in some of these areas. And then that will dive all the way south. And again, 20 degrees below normal for this time of year as we go into Labor Day itself next Monday, September 2nd. And then while at the same time, the Pacific Northwest and Western Canada will be warming up with temperatures up to 25 degrees above normal over there. And that will continue even a week from today into Tuesday, September 3rd. Some of that heat may take a run at the Western Plains and the Rockies. We'll have to keep an eye on that as we go into a week from today. Precipitation over Labor Day weekend from Saturday, August 31st through Labor Day Monday, September 2nd. 
Looks like we're setting up for some heavy rain across Texas, including West Texas, an area that's been very dry as of recent with significant drought developing. That will be some good news to get some moisture hopefully spread out over these three days that we do have this weekend. Uh, Oklahoma, the Sooner State, going to get some very heavy rainfall as well. That could move over into southern Missouri, Arkansas, and Louisiana. And southern Florida could also get a couple inches of rain, say, from Daytona Beach down there toward Miami, Fort Lauderdale, and then very dry across the north and the west as we go through Labor Day weekend. Something we're watching in the tropics here, turning over the tropical weather update. The National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida is watching an area, a low potential right now, but a 20% chance is a 20% chance. So we have to watch this here. And the cone of uncertainty has this as far west as the northern Windward Islands. And we are seeing those water temperatures very warm. The Gulf of Mexico is boiling. The Caribbean, especially the Western Caribbean, is boiling. And areas over toward the Western Tropical Atlantic near the Bahamas, the water is boiling right now. And the area of concern is a little bit further east. But there's still warm enough waters to watch this system. And looking at the ensemble guidance, this is what we look at when you look at something around a week or more out. And you can see Wednesday, August 28th, this is tomorrow, that system, that tropical wave we're talking about that has that 20% probability on it is still over Western Africa. As we go into Friday, that moves over the open waters of the main development region, otherwise known as the MDR. And then as we enter into Sunday, September 1st, that system gets a little bit closer, but still east of the Windward Islands. And then finally, by a week from today, on Tuesday, September 3rd, this may be taking a run at the Windward Islands and possibly Puerto Rico again. So we'll have to be keeping a very close eye on that. And it does have support from other ensemble members as well, from the GEF ensemble members and the GEPS ensemble members from a week from today, Tuesday, September 3rd. We have plenty of time to watch it. There's no need to panic here. We have plenty of time to watch it. We'll do that right here for you on this channel. Make sure to subscribe to the channel down below for the latest weather information right at your fingertips. And also turn on post notifications for the latest videos, live streams that we do here on Weather on the Go. Make sure to press the like button, the thumbs up button down below if you did enjoy today's weather forecast. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. We'll get to those after the video. And I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their Tuesday out there.